Hi and welcome to the third series of Thread Talks and I've got a very special guest on the brow sofa today. He's one half of one of my favourite hair care brands. Favourite because it's been it's steeped in ancient Indian beauty practices um, with amazing Ayurvedic principles behind it. Those principles coming from his hair oiling grandma um, who passed it down to him and his sister Nikita. And today he's going to be sharing some of his Ayurvedic beauty secrets with us. Um, and when he's not spreading the word about Ayurveda, he is busy hosting Beauty Founded, which is a podcast where he sheds light on amazing beauty entrepreneurs. And I've been very privileged to be on that. Um, he is also a global ambassador for UNICEF. So I'm delighted to welcome today Akash Mehta from Fable and Maine. Welcome Akash. Thank you so much for having me, Benita. Very nice to have you on the sofa. And I'm very excited to talk to you about your wonderful brand, Fable and Maine. And, you know, I, I find it extraordinary that ancient Indian beauty practices are having such a moment at the, yeah. at the moment. So, you know, I just thought, you know, why do you think that is? I think it's a mixture of a couple of things that these rituals are, are truly timeless. They've been existing for generations and, and centuries. And I think uh, it's no different that they would still continue. But I do think post pandemic, there's been a real yearn and kind of want for kind of wellness and thinking about holistic wellness from within, not just outer. And I do think beauty has been pre predominantly dominated by outer for the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I think that has been, I think, a big revelation to many, especially Gen Z's who probably haven't had the luxury of experiencing some rituals in this very fast ephemeral world. So now it's about taking a step back and yeah. Ayurveda is one of the best ways to do that. Yes, and I love, I love the fact that this has been passed down from yeah. your grandmother when she used to oil your hair and that is, you know, for, for me, I had exactly the same with my mother. Yeah. So it's all uh, beauty rituals that I guess we didn't really think about but yeah. have, have become an integral part of our lives. Exactly. So. And it's pretty crazy how like today you'll go on TikTok and it's like a whole new trend and people are like loving this new they call it hair slugging for example hair slugging um, i haven't heard that one yeah <laughs> it's like it kind of comes from the skin slugging era of like you know kind of like oil dripped honey glazed mm -hmm. look so they're thinking the same now with um with with hair oils but it's actually uh yeah obviously this has been from our generational childhood kind of like passed down but it's it's great no matter what medium people are experiencing it how they come across it as long as they're doing it and yeah. getting the benefits from it all I can ask. I really. totally agree, and I love the fact that my mother used to put mustard oil in my hair, yeah. which made my eyes stream. I know, Whereas stink. you, <laughs> I mean, I tried your coconut mask and mm. it smelled divine, and yeah. I thought, how come we didn't have this? I know. It, that, that's sort of why, like, you know, it, it, we don't have to change everything. If it's good, it's good. And, and I think, you know, having all those amazing Ayurvedic ingredients, generally speaking, I would have loved to have kind of like just kept that same way of life. But it's true that like, we lost touch to our traditions because of a couple of reasons. One is the smell, wasn't empowering. Yeah. Was uh, I remember at school I was I was get bullied quite a lot for like curry hair because you had that mm -hmm. residue left over from grandma oily from, from hair, nanny's yeah. mask you would make. So I, I was always like you know speed it up, get it out of my hair, which you don't get the true benefits. Number one, if you speed it up, but two also I do think there is um, a lack of you know we're always traveling. There's a lack of access to those you know, Indian grocery stores with the ashwagandha, with the haldi, and why can't we create something that's got all those benefits, all those ingredients in a, in a FMCG good that you can grab on the shelves of Sephora, but has an amazing scent. And I looked at the market with Nikki and we were like, there really wasn't really any Ayurvedic brands, especially in the Western world. I'm talking about yes. in the US, UK. Yeah. So um, we kind of got together and we're like, wait, this is the reason why we're creating this. And it's extraordinary that you are on the shelves of Sephora. And you mentioned some really interesting ingredients there. Haldi, yeah. which is turmeric. Turmeric. And ashwanda, which uh, is an interesting ingredient. Actually, yeah. Can you talk to us a little bit about, you know, ashwagandha super ingredients? And superfoods. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so ashwagandha for me is one of the most interesting ones. Um, it's again getting a big kind of interest uh, in the Western world. You mm -hmm. often go to a, a protein bar like protein shakes and you'll see like a one pound supplement to get an ashwagandha boost and often the words associated with it are like immunity strength and the reason why is ashwagandha means strength of a stallion or like a horse mm -hmm. so it's a, it's a root that's really for strengthening from within and your hair shaft also and your hair follicles can strengthen your roots 
Um, so that is a really amazing ingredient that's kind of essential for healthy hair growth. At the same time, we have another ingredient in our hair oil, which I love, it's called dashmul. So dashmul sort of looks like hay in its kind of texture, mm-hmm. but um, it's uh, 10 potent roots blended into one. And it really promotes a sense of calm and well-being. So that kind of juxtaposition and balance of kind of a root that's calming and a root that's strengthening is sort of the perfect balance in a hair oil, along with your carrying oil like castor oil, bingraj oil, uh, coconut oil, as you said. Sounds amazing. Yeah. And you can get it all combined in, all combined. in your products, And the reason why we have great. a lot of different types of oils and, and ingredients is because we try to make the oil, for example, suitable for all hair types. So... You know, often certain oils are suited for more thicker hair or Indian hair. So we didn't want to create a brand that was limited just to a certain subset, you know, subset of people. Uh, we wanted everyone to enjoy the benefits of hair oiling um, because these ingredients don't discriminate. So why should our products? So and how yeah. often? What's the ritual? You know, yeah. we have a brow ritual. What's what would you recommend as your hair ritual? So the hair ritual I would recommend is so you shouldn't wash your hair too regularly. Number mm-hmm. one. So once a week is sort of optimum. Once or twice. Of course, it depends on your activity base. If you're swimming every day, if you're an Olympian, mm-hmm. or you know, you have to change your routine according to that. Yeah. But generally, once a week is great, and then th- therefore on your wash days is where you should be hair oiling. Um, so we recommend uh, massaging the oil into your roots with an Indian head massage. It's really important to do the head massage because the head massage increases the blood circulation, which delivers the essential oxygen and nutrients to your scalp. And that kickstarts the anagen phase of the hair cycle, which is the hair growth phase. So without the massage, you're not getting the true benefits. And you can do it on yourself, can you? Can you can do it on yeah. yourself, exactly. So that's one thing I love is we often were doing it in general, like, you know, my grandma would have like a tr- sort of train. It would be like my grandma, my mom and me or my grandma and me. But in this modern day, you know, you're not always having access with people. You're quite, we're quite solitary. So I think the benefit of now doing a self-head massage mm-hmm. is really, really powerful. Um, so that's what I would do. Massage it into your roots. Leave it in overnight if you can um, and sleep in with it. But if you can't, um, 10 minutes before you shower is okay. That sounds amazing. Um, I must try and do it, but do it consistently. I think that's the trick. That's the thing. It's a yeah. slow burn. It's, um, you will see instant results like, you know, after one or two oilings. But mm-hmm. generally, you know, like anything, if you get off the kind of routine, it can reverse. Not reverse, but it can stop its kind of momentum. So you've got well, to keep it up. Yeah. I think both you and your sister Nikita have incredible hair. So glossy, shiny, yeah. uh, you do have youth on your side, but I'm sure it's the oiling that does it. The oiling, yeah, <laughs> definitely. We do oil, like we've been oiling for years, so that definitely helps. Yeah. Um, and, and it's interesting, actually, because you are siblings and yeah. you've done this together. Yeah. Um, and how, how do you find that, working with your sister? So overall, it's incredible. Like, um, it, we're the first sibling founder brand at Sephora, which I find so fascinating. Oh, that's really um, Probably there's like a little reason for that. Why? Quite an Indian thing but as well, actually. It's quite an Indian thing. Quite family, because I used to work with my sister and, you know. You definitely, like, you know, most of my kind of uncles, my parents, my, my dad's side, you mm-hmm. know, they, they all had family business. Often you have those seen, I think, from my generation above, I've seen certain issues with how family business can also cause problems. So I think for me... I've had to like go into this very holistically and very pragmatically. And like from day one, we kind of had that really uncomfortable decision to get a lawyer in and kind of make a joint venture shareholders agreement that was thinking about all the permutations. So like if my sister has a partner that kind of coerces her to be like, you've got to take the whole company away. Like you know, all those really weird hypothetical conversations, we put it down a solution in writing. So when those moments might come, we know that we're protecting ourselves and each other in that process. I think it's such an important thing to do. Our, my, my father never did that with his brothers. And therefore today they might have issues 40 years down into the business or when you get to often a sale of a business. So it's keeping it really professional. Keeping it professional. The and then from there you can sort of have that kind of Um, trust in each other but also in writing and I think that's really a big advice I would give to anyone not only going into business with your sibling or your loved one or a friend but with anyone right I think it's just an important exercise to do but I will you know because we have that no filter kind of approach it is sometimes hard to make each other see that kind of look this is the CEO speaking not the brother or uh, and I think sometimes you've got to deal with those moments of frustration. It has its pros and cons, right? I mean, you know, the trust, the I trust. think the fact that there is no filter that you can talk to each other. You can you can then, resolve it quickly then. That's the cool yes. part too. So you can go yes. in a really heated argument and then the next day you'll be back to normal because you have that untrust 
they kind of yeah. that trusted bond in each other. I think that's really important. Yeah, but I take my hat off to you because I think that it is it can be challenging, but it yeah. can also be incredible. So yeah. and you're it's also, a superpower if you make it exactly, which yeah. you're obviously uh, doing. So that's great to see. And let's talk brows. Yeah. And you've got great brows. Thank you. Do you do anything with your brows? I do. Um, I use your products. And um, I, I, I generally, um, for brow care and brow tidy. So like my brow tidy up is I'll go, you know, threading. Um, the, the hardest thing for me is I travel a lot. And sometimes I'll have like a little event or something. I'll be like, uh-oh, been neglected. I need to go to a quick threading. So I, I tend to need really good products that I can keep by myself at home. Just if you can't find a parlor, you have those products to go to. And your products have been incredible, truly. When you sent them to me before the, the podcast that we recorded. Um, I'm going to guess you use the brow gel. I use a brow gel. I use also the tweezer and then the scissors. The scissors, are, I've used a lot of the different scissors. Scissors are perfect for male yeah. grooming. Yeah, but the brow gel I've used today, you can see, it kind of keeps it up and... And I think it's really important to feel empowered in your brows. I think we often don't talk about it. And people always say, love your eyes. Um, and now you're seeing in the last probably five years, people saying, love your eyebrows. Mm. And it's really cool to see this kind of yeah, movement to brow care. And especially, I think, with men, yeah, younger sure. generation are definitely better. Because yeah. I still come across a lot of Dennis Healy brows. Yeah, and I'm sure. introducing them to the scissors, to the gel. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I think... Everyone needs Everyone to needs. indulge in a bit of brow care. Exactly. And, and I think that's and exactly as you said, like feeling, not feeling shy about conforming to society. I remember growing up when I first started threading, I wanted to keep that such a secret. I didn't want anyone to like know I was threading my eyebrows because would it be considered masculine or would I be made fun of? And then over time, I, um, yeah, I just started embracing it. Yeah. And, not, and like, I wasn't shy to go to my friend and be like, oh, I just have a threading appointment. I'll, um, I'll meet you after. You know, instead of lying. Which is fantastic. Which is great, you know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's no, important. It's great. So, well, thank you for coming and sharing all your hair secrets because I think hair, brows, it's all the same, really. It's just hair. different parts of body. <laughs> exactly. Um, and I certainly will be going back and using that coconut mask uh, again. I'm not going to let you off the brow sofa until you've shared a brow story with me. Sure. Um, it's quite a, it's quite an uh, embarrassing one, but I think a real one. Um, it always are. It's always are. Like, yeah. um, so when I started, like, threading, uh, kind of, Maybe I started threading when I was 16, 17. Um, I remember I started going more and more back into the, you know, the threading uh, salon. And then I was kind of realizing over each each time I went, I was getting thinner and thinner. And I just didn't realize that. I think the West, the, the society at that time was kind of like really promoting the thinner eyebrow look. Thick was kind of like what you didn't want. That was what you saw in like models and stuff. So I was getting thinner and thinner. And so one day I realized I was like, what the hell have I done with my eyebrows? So I let it grow out again and just now really keep my natural look. And yeah, all those photos on Facebook you will not find. They've been <laughs> archived really rigorously. Um, but it's a real story, right? We all have those moments where we, we do these things to ourselves, whether it's our hair, whether it's our eyebrows. And then you're like, okay, never again. You live and you learn. You live and, and you, you learn. don't repeat those And mistakes. it always goes back to just go less is more, natural is better. Yeah. And that's what I think is a big lesson in life from those childhood kind of experimental phases. Mm. It's just don't change too much. Preserve about what you have. Just embrace yeah. it and start to focus on the beauty that's also from within, yes. not just outside. I try sharing that with my teenage children. Yeah. I think the problem is that they too will learn in hindsight. Yeah. I'm hoping they pick up some pearls. Yeah. Sometimes but you've got to experience it yourself yeah, to know, it's a right? Passage, and that's okay, exactly. But it's great to have people like you to show them how it's done yeah. in a very contemporary and way. And be honest with your own stories. I think yeah. it's so important. Yeah. yeah. Before you go, yeah. I've got a few quick fire questions. Yeah, love them. Are you a yoga man or do you prefer to go for a run? Yoga man. Sean Connery or Daniel Craig? Uh, Daniel Craig's so not the biggest, no I don't have the biggest knowledge of Sean Connery. <laughs> oh my God, you're missing yeah. out. Okay. <laughs> Chana masala or a chicken biryani? Chana masala because I'm vegan. Vegetarian. Yeah, vegan. vegan so. I thought that might be the yeah. case. The final question is uh, meditation or a gin and tonic? Oh, meditation. For sure. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> really, really like big into alcohol. Well. So, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks one. so much for coming. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Love this.